we'll, we'll try that. Or, oh, yes, yeah. It's even worse, isn't it? Yeah. You often wonder, you know, if the clergy are up in the vestry, what on earth they talk about? It's normally, where on earth am I going to put these wires? It is wonderful to uh, see you. Um, I'm glad you haven't been able to feel confident for coming out. I know we're a little bit worried with all that's going on with the infections, but uh, it's, as long as we keep our masks on, I'm sure we'll be perfectly safe, and it's good to meet together to worship the Lord. I'm just going to share with you what the Sunday School have been doing this morning. Uh, they're looking past the immediate Christmas story into Jesus being presented in the temple and uh, how Jesus is alike, not just to the Jewish nation, but to Gentiles, to the whole world as well. And we also saw how the wise men came. They weren't Jews, but they came and worshipped Jesus. So this is what they did, a sort of stained glass. Does that work if I hold it up to the light? That's what the children have been doing on Zoom this morning. And uh, the words say, Jesus, the promised light of the world. So uh, again, I always say, do remember our children who meet separately at the moment. It's uh, wonderful to uh, minister to them. Talking of Jesus being the light of the world, we are going to light our Advent candles. Reminder that the uh, first candle, the first flame goes out. The first candle reminds us of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The second, the prophets. The third, John the Baptist. Today's candle, we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus. Let's pray. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Our first song of praise this morning. If you've got a hymn book, it's number 71. The words are on the screen. Child in the Manger. Very familiar tune. Always good to bring ourselves before the Lord as we start in confession. So we're going to pray this prayer together. Let's just pause for a few moments and reflect.
We pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you that you promised forgiveness to all who turn to you in repentance and faith. Give us joy in our hearts knowing that we are back in relationship with you when we look to you. Amen. And this is the collect for today. Let's uh, pray this together, shall we? Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just going to go through a couple of notices, which really are just the Christmas services. So we do have our carols by candlelight here this evening in church. That will also be streamed online on our Facebook page. Uh, 6.30, the church will look beautiful with all candles lit and uh, Rich is going to be speaking tonight. So do come along to that with your mask. And then uh, Christmas Eve, we're hoping to have our nativity at 3.30. Always good fun uh, with the church full of uh, children going through the Christmas story. And then our midnight service is a bit different, if you remember. We're not uh, celebrating midnight in the UK. We're going to celebrate midnight in Bethlehem. So 8.30 is our late night communion service, which means we can all have a a decent early night, I think. And uh, Christmas Day, 10 o'clock in here for our Christmas Day celebration. And next Sunday, there's a shorter service, more reflective, um, at 10.30 of communion. That's Boxing Day. Can I just say thank you to uh, the people who have decorated the church so beautifully? Uh, Thank you, uh, Mike and uh, Lorna, for the tree. And just all the other um, greenery. And I always love the uh, little um, creative uh, pew drops, the Christmas trees. I always think they look smashing. So thank you to people who have decorated the church. Our next song is going to be Mission Praise. It's 589. See him lying on a bed of straw.
Do excuse me, I'm falling to pieces here. Well, at least the microphone is. There we go, this is testing the microphone, pulling masks off it the whole time. Always a good song to sing, see him lying on a bed of straw. We're now going to, uh, so I'm good, you've just sat down, I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to say our creed, which is also our first Bible reading, which is based on Philippians chapter 2. So let's affirm our faith together in these words. Talking of Jesus. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at, ev at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we're now pleased to sit, we're going to have our first Bible reading. Our reading this morning is from John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. We're going to stand and sing again, What a Beautiful Name. Oh, <laughs> 
Father God, thank you for sending Jesus into the world and thank you that the name of Jesus is so glorious, so powerful, so wonderful to us this Christmas time. Help us to rejoice in you at Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Do sit down and uh, just a welcome to some of the people joining us online. Um, Welcome to Rosie and David, Mike Brown, Jan Clark, Jean and Derek Folkard, and special thank you to uh, Jane, who's not very well and is uh, joining us from Hospital Ward F6. So uh, great to see you this morning, Jane, with us. We're going to be uh, looking at the latter part of our Bible reading, verse 9 onwards. But as I start, I was just uh, thinking about that old movie. I know they've done, they've done the story several times, but particularly the old movie, I think 1950, Cinderella. What is it about that girl, Cinderella? What on earth does she see in that Prince Charming? I can only assume it's because Prince Charming must be filthy rich, powerful. But let's face it, the guy must be a right Wally. And surely Cinderella can do better. Why is he a Wally? Well, the guy dances with Cinderella all evening, and the next day he can't remember what she looks like. I mean, even with all the makeup off, if you did an identity parade, he should be able to recognize her. 
But no, not this Wally. What does he do? He grabs the glass slipper and thinks, okay, whoever girl fits the glass slipper, she's the one for me. The first girl with a size five is going to be the lucky one. What a Wally. And the, he even gives those two ugly sisters a chance. Really? She can do better. Today, we're continuing, though, to look at John chapter 1, and we're focusing, as I say, on verses 9 to 13. Just take a look at verse 9. It really is so lovely, isn't it? The true light that gives light to every person was coming into the world. When that Prince Charming met Cinderella at the ball, he thought he had met a shining light in her, and yet the next day he is unable to recognise her, even as she stands right in front of him. So he has to uh, rely on that glass slipper strategy. But it's the problem we see at the beginning of this Bible reading we're looking at. The true light that gives light to everyone is Jesus. And Jesus has come into the world, and yet did people recognise him? Did they recognise the one through whom God created the world? Sadly, by and large, people did not recognise their God. And this is what we see in verse 10. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. A film I uh, love watching uh, from the 1980s, great family film called The Princess Bride. Anyone like The Princess Bride? If you haven't watched The Princess Bride, watch it. It is absolutely great. It really is great fun. But early, I'm not going to spoil the plot, But early on in the film, we meet this beautiful young lady called Buttercup, and she's in love with this boy called Wesley. Wesley goes off to make a fortune so that they can get married and live happily ever after, but news comes back that Wesley has been killed by the dread pirate Roberts. Soon afterwards, Buttercup gets kidnapped as well. But Wesley, who of course is still alive, comes to rescue her, but he's now wearing a mask, and she thinks he must be the dread pirate Roberts. She doesn't recognise him and believes she's been kidnapped again. The mask blinds her to his true identity. And really the Bible says the same seems to be true of humanity. God in Jesus can walk right up to us and all we see is a stranger. We seem to be blind to his true identity. So it's a bit of a bummer really, isn't it? And it's even worse. Look at verse 11. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. This verse is talking primarily about the Jewish nation. This Jewish nation, they were called to be God's special people, at least to begin with. They were expecting their Messiah to come in, and here he is, come to bring in God's kingdom. What they've been longing for, they've been dreaming for this moment, and they don't receive him. The people reject him. The leaders of the nation hang him on a cross. It's a tragedy. But before we get into a blame game, we have to realise that we're exactly the same. Because Jesus, is a, in the Bible, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Sunday school this morning, they were looking how he's not just the king of the Jews, but the king of all nations, the king of kings. But the Romans were involved in crucifying Jesus. And every generation, there are people who try to extinguish the light of Jesus. As we read through John's Gospel, we get to chapter 3, and we're told that people don't want to come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. They prefer to remain in darkness, and this describes us, really. It's the sad human condition. We prefer darkness to light. So not only have we dug a pit and jumped into it, we also fail to recognise the one who comes to rescue us from that pit. Even worse, we think we're better off in the pit. However, in the Cinderella story and the Princess Bride, there are happy endings. And there can be a happy ending for all of us as we continue in this Bible reading. Verse 12 begins by saying, Yet all who received him to those who believed in his name. There is hope. There's good news. Some people do receive Jesus. Some people do believe in him. That is, they put their trust in 
the name of Jesus. You know, we may be blind to the true identity of Jesus to begin with. We may fail to see God at work in his beautiful creation. We may fail to see Jesus if he walks right up to us. But he is the light, and that light can still chase away all the darkness if we're just willing to spend a moment and receive him. As we look ahead to Christmas next week, are we willing to receive Jesus again? Are we willing to receive Jesus and put our trust in him? We might have to pray, but we will have to pray for God to remove our blindness if we want to see Jesus clearly. But if we do that, if we do pray to see Jesus, if we do receive him, just look at what he bestows on us in that wonderful verse 12. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Those who do accept Jesus into their lives and put their trust in him become children of God, part of the family. Now, Cinderella, of course, she was made to sleep in the cinders. That's where her name comes from, Cinderella. She had to do all the worst jobs around the house. Her life was a mis misery. She had no privileges. And she was bullied, wasn't she, by uh, the two stepsisters. She always comes out appearing dressed in rags, covered in ashes. And really, that is what we are like without God in our lives. Cinders and ashes. I heard one school use Cinderella as an illustration at the beginning of Lent. Do you remember the beginning of Lent? We put ash on our foreheads. To ash you came, to ash you will return. It's a reminder that we're mortal, and Cinderella, in many ways, represents that. Our mortality, we are cinders and ashes. But there's hope as she marries Prince Charming. Now, I'm going to forget what I said at the beginning about Prince Charming being a Wally. He's now bang on the money. He's a good guy. And there's hope for Cinderella marrying Prince Charming. No longer shall she be confined to the ashes. She's going to become a princess. Not through any effort of her own, but simply because he chooses to make her his bride. He bestows on her the right to become a princess through marriage. And this is the picture that's going on here in John. We can be lifted out of the pit of cinders and ashes, of our own mortality, and we can be given new life by God. So verse 12 and 13, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband will, but born of God. You see, just as Cinderella couldn't earn her way out of the ashes to become a princess, she had to rely on Prince Charming's unconditional love for her, so to our situation with God. A moment ago I said it's like we're in a pit that we've dug ourselves and jumped into. A pit of ashes and darkness with no prospect but death. And there's no way we can escape from the pit by our own efforts. There's no ladder and we can't climb out. But then Jesus comes to the edge of the pit. He reaches down his hand. He's willing to pull us out of the pit. We can't get out any other way, but we can take the hand of the Saviour. This is what it means to all who receive him, to all who trust in Jesus. We are pulled out of the pit and we get the right to become children of God. We're brought into the royal household of light and life. Paul uses the picture of adoption in Ephesians. And you know what it's like with adoption. A child who's grown up, not part of a family, now becomes part of that family. A full member of that family. So take a girl called Jo. She needs a loving home. She doesn't have a loving family. But then a couple adopt her. And she's now part of that family. She has the full rights of being a family member. She takes on the family name. And all her descendants now inherit all that belongs to that family. Their property, their name, their reputation. I mean, just imagine in our royal family if uh, 
William and Kate were unable to have their own children and they adopted a child, that child would be made royalty. A prince or princess. Like Cinderella was when she got married. as She was chosen by Prince Charming. And this is what God offers you and I if we receive the Lord Jesus, the light of the world, if we believe in his name. It's the gospel. God wants to give us the rights of being his children, which means we inherit everything when we come into the light of Christ. And we're talking of the ultimate everlasting royal family here, far grander than our own royal family. Just think of the, think of the relationship that's existed between in the Godhead between Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That relationship that's existed from eternity, a relationship of love. The Father loves the Son. The Son loves the Father. They both love the Spirit and in return, the Spirit loves them. That's the family we enter into. That family of love. Which means, if you're a Christian here today, you are a child of God and the Father loves you just as much as he loves Jesus. It's worth repeating, isn't it? The Father loves you if you have accepted Jesus into your heart. The Father loves you just as much as he loves Jesus. That's why we sing, what a beautiful name. The invitation of Christmas as Jesus comes into the world. To all who receive him, we're given the right to enter into the ultimate family and those relationships of perfect love, children of God. The other thing, of course, about uh, the Cinderella story is how she's transformed. She goes from covered, being covered in cinders and ashes and dressed in rags to being made totally clean and dressed in royal clothing. Fly buzzing around. It's a good picture, actually, of what happens to us as we enter God's family. Only this time it's not external cleansing, it's internal. We're made totally clean, and we're dressed in royal clothing. Even though our sins were like scarlet, we're made as white as snow. That's the promise. The Holy Spirit will transform us into the people God wants us to be. It's the end of uh, verse 13 here. John uses the language of us being born of God. It's not a human decision. We can't make ourselves clean. We can't transform ourselves into better people. Well, not by much. But God can and he does. He gives us new birth. He makes us into new creations and transforms us. Again, in uh, chapter 3 of John's Gospel, we meet a chap called Nicodemus. And Nicodemus, he comes to Jesus at night when all is dark. And that's symbolic. He's in the darkness. But he does want to discover the kingdom of God. He wants Jesus in his life. But Jesus has to explain, you, know, you can't be part of the kingdom of God unless you're born again or born anew. Dear Nicodemus, he, he's in the darkness. He doesn't understand. He hasn't got a clue what Jesus is talking about. How can somebody go into their mother's womb a second time, he asks. No, says Jesus. You need to be born, not just physically, but born of the Spirit. Jesus goes on to explain how all of that is achieved through what he does on the cross. But it's what's being promised to all who will open their hearts to the Lord Jesus. New birth, that means transformation, washed clean, dressed in royal clothes, members of a new family, the loving family of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, taken out of the darkness, brought into God's marvellous light. It doesn't get any better. And this is what we celebrate at Christmas. And what I really cherish about Christmas, we often sing this at um, the end of the midnight service, Hark the Herald, and I always get goosebumps. Uh, Wesley put into song these wonderful truths we're seeing. The final verse, 
Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. I'm supposed to be looking at the third verse, but I love this one as well. I'm going to the third verse. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. I just love those words. Born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. As we close, if you're a Christian here this morning, praise God for all that he's done for you. You are a child of God, born again, part of God's family, and nothing can change that. And you are loved more than you will ever know. If you're not yet a Christian, well, hear and respond to this glorious invitation. Pray for Jesus to reveal himself to you. It's just too easy to go with the flow and want to remain in the darkness. We don't like our deeds being exposed, but God promises to wipe away all of those deeds and to bestow on us the right to be his children. Transformed, born again, made new, cleansed. Jesus Christ became a human being and died on the cross to make all this possible so that we might have eternal life in his loving family forever. So I'm going to say a prayer now, and uh, if the prayer is right for you, echo each line of it as I say it. It'll be a prayer just to receive Jesus, to believe in his name. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for Christmas. Thank you for sending Jesus, your son, the light of the world. Thank you, he died for me. Lord, take away the darkness. Open my eyes. Help me see Jesus. Help me to receive him and become a child of God. Thank you for this promise, and I claim it in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing again. In Mission Praise at 62, Born in the Night.
pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for the freedom we have to gather together and worship you in this place. So many Christians around the world experience persecution for their faith, and we pray for them now, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you that we each have our place in your church, and may we find joy in serving you every day. Amen. Loving God, we pray for the Queen and her family. We think of all those in positions of leadership in our country and also in the wider world. May there be more justice, more peace and more fairness in the countries that need it the most. We think of Afghanistan, Nigeria, Pakistan, North Korea, and perhaps others that we are aware of. Amen. We lift to you, Lord, our NHS, its staff, and all those who are working tirelessly because of the pandemic. Please sustain and encourage those who are weary. Bless everyone involved in the vaccination programme. We pray that this huge national effort will keep many, many people safe from illness in the coming weeks and months. Amen. Lord, we bring to you those that we know who are bereaved, those who are sick, and those who are suffering in other ways at this time. Be close to them. Bring healing and comfort, we pray. Amen. And Lord, as we approach Christmas, we ask for safety as we meet our friends and our family. Help us to look beyond COVID, beyond the noise of commerciality, to the joy and the wonder of the birth of Jesus, our friend and our saviour. We thank you for his birth, his life and his death for us. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final song of praise, our final carol, is number 35, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Thank you uh, so much for coming here today and uh, joining us online. We do hope that uh, you'll join us later at half past six for Carols by Candlelight. But Father God, we thank you for all that's been collected this morning. We do ask that you will take this and use it to extend your glorious kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. So now may we be filled with the knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus. May we see him clearly. Rejoice this Christmas time and share the good news with others so that together we might enjoy God's family for all eternity. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us this day and forevermore. Amen.